In a mysterious land of ancient traditions, a startling revelation emerges from the Arabian Peninsula, shaking the world. This discovery challenges beliefs, rupturing faith's foundations. What are the findings of atheists in Saudi Arabia that clash with historical ideologies? Could these discoveries reshape history's understanding? Stay tuned as we delve into the heart of Saudi Arabia, where an ancient secret confronts both atheists and believers, defying explanation. Saudi Arabia, formerly the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, is a country in West Asia that has a rich religious history, especially within the context of Islam. When you think of Saudi Arabia, your mind likely goes to Mecca and Medina, the revered Islamic holy cities. It's rare to associate the country with Christianity, however, recent studies have altered that perception. Some intriguing claims suggest that Mount Sinai might be located in Saudi Arabia. Mount Sinai is the most religiously significant place in the Abrahamic faith. It holds immense significance in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. It's a site of reverence, drawing visitors worldwide who seek spiritual connections or wish to follow in the footsteps of Moses. According to biblical narratives, Mount Sinai is where Moses and the Israelites received the Ten Commandments from God, forming the core of moral and religious teachings for Judaism and Christianity. As depicted in the book of Exodus, God summoned Moses to the mountaintop, where the Ten Commandments were inscribed onto stone tablets. This mountain is often referred to as Jebel Musa, Arabic for the mountain of Moses. For Christians, Mount Sinai foreshadows the heavenly Mount Zion, a place where God dwells in glory with his people. Jesus' Sermon on the Mount relates to his followers, urging them to embody the spirit of the law, not just the literal wording, as if they've touched divinity itself. Biblical accounts also link Mount Sinai to the transfiguration of Jesus, where he transformed in the presence of Moses and Elijah. The Jews hold Mount Sinai as the most sacred location on earth. They believe it's where they uniquely encountered God and where humanity is directly connected with the divine, a blend of spiritual and physical interaction. This aligns with the essence of Judaism, where religion bridges the gap between the divine and everyday existence. Jewish tradition also links Mount Sinai to Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son, Isaac. This event reinforces the Jews' belief in their chosen status and covenant with God, binding them to uphold the commandments and teachings. The book of Deuteronomy underscores these themes, as Moses reminds the Israelites of their divine agreement and the imperative to obey God's laws. Mount Sinai is symbolic for Jews, representing their identity and destiny as God's chosen people. The Quran, too, recognizes the mountain's significance, portraying it as the place where God communicated with Moses and gave him the tablets of the Torah, the sacred scriptures of Islam. These commandments serve as a code of conduct, reflecting God's desires for his people. Moreover, the mountain symbolizes the junction of humanity and divinity, emphasizing the link between God and his people and underscoring obedience and adherence to his commands. Islamic narratives commend Moses for his patience and obedience, guiding him to convey God's message to the Pharaoh and his subjects. The mountain also illustrates God's compassion as he forgave the Israelites despite their transgressions and bestowed Moses with a fresh set of laws. In Christian teachings, Mount Sinai embodies the journey of faith, the pursuit of holiness, and the longing to draw nearer to God. Across these three faiths, the mountain holds deep significance. However, its precise location remains a mystery. So, having understood the profound importance of Mount Sinai to the three Abrahamic religions, let's now delve into the quest for its precise location. Where can Mount Sinai be found? For quite some time, the commonly accepted belief was that Mount Sinai resided in Egypt, positioned in the southwestern corner of the country near the border with Israel and the Sinai Peninsula. Revered as the holiest site in Judaism, this majestic mountain towers at approximately 2,285 meters or 7,497 feet above sea level and hosts a plethora of significant religious landmarks, including the renowned St. Catherine's Monastery, and the Church of the Transfiguration. St. Catherine's Monastery, nestled on the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt, holds a prominent place in history as one of the oldest monasteries globally, having been constructed in 527 AD by Emperor Justinian I. 
This decision was spurred by complaints from hermit monks frequenting the area, who ultimately settled there. This monastery boasts an impressive legacy not only due to its age, but also due to its distinction as home to the world's oldest continuously operating library. This treasure trove houses ancient manuscripts and books dating back to the 4th century. Enhanced by its striking Byzantine architecture and an awe-inspiring collection of icons, the monastery draws pilgrims from far and wide. Within its confines lies the Chapel of the Burning Bush, believed to be the very site where God communicated with Moses through a burning bush. For Christians worldwide, St. Catherine's Monastery stands as a symbolically significant pilgrimage destination. Over time, the monastery underwent transformations. During the era of the Fatimid Caliphate, a pre-existing chapel was converted into a mosque that saw regular use by Muslims until the 13th century under the Mamluk Sultanate. Currently, the mosque sees limited use, as it is reserved for special occasions. Following a period of neglect during the Ottoman Empire's reign, the mosque received restoration efforts in the early 20th century. As previously mentioned, the exact location of Mount Sinai continues to be a topic of ongoing debate, with no definitive conclusion reached. Throughout history, numerous locations across the Middle East have been proposed as the potential original site of Mount Sinai. Scholars meticulously scrutinize the Bible and other historical texts to uncover hints of the mountain's whereabouts. Among the various proposed locations, one has sparked significant controversy. This narrative takes us back to 1873, when British traveler, explorer, and Bible scholar Charles T. Baker introduced a groundbreaking idea. Baker posited that Mount Sinai was a volcano, putting forth his argument in a pamphlet titled, Mount Sinai, a Volcano. In his work, he highlighted descriptions in the Bible of the mountain emitting smoke and fire, even in the absence of ash. Additionally, he claimed that the mountain lay along Moses' route from Midian in northwest Arabia back to Egypt. With this theory in mind, he turned his attention to the mountains at the head of the Gulf of Aqaba, particularly focusing on Jabal al-Nur, or the Mountain of Light. When Baker ventured to his projected Mount Sinai location, he discovered that it was not volcanic in nature. Humble in the face of his discovery, he retracted his volcanic hypothesis. Nonetheless, he persisted with his assessment of the location, conceding his mistake in asserting the mountain's volcanic nature. Instead, he posited that the biblical references might have pertained to the area during a storm, showcasing the complexity of pinpointing the mountain's true location. While numerous scholars diverge from Charles Baker's stance, interpreting the Bible more metaphorically, others embraced his claims. Alternative proposals about the mountain's location have emerged, suggesting places like Egypt, Jordan, or Israel. But unfortunately, Charles Baker's death shortly after his visit to Jabal al-Nur prevented him from further exploring the region and potentially substantiating his theory. Influential scholars Alois Musil and H. Philby aligned themselves with Charles Baker's notion, concurring that Mount Sinai resides in Saudi Arabia. Musil, an Austrian Czech scholar, extensively traversed the region in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Philby, a British intelligence officer deeply involved in the Middle East and North Africa during the 1920s and 1930s, documented his journeys and authored insightful books, including The Heart of Arabia and Arabian Highlands. Both scholars pointed to Jabal al-Manifa near Wadi al-Rab as the true site of Mount Sinai. In his work Arabian Highlands, Philby recounts his 1952 visit to Jabal al-Nur, confirming its identity as Mount Sinai and highlighting its significant mosque atop the summit. Philby argued that, in comparison to the suggested locations in Egypt and Jordan, Jabal al-Manifa aligned most closely with the description. In 1971, French scholar Jean Koenig proposed Halal Bader Volcanic Peak as the probable location of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. He published an article titled, Cyanotic Itineraries in Arabian, outlining his arguments about the accuracy of his interpretation of the mountain's whereabouts. While building on the progress of his predecessors, Charles Baker, Alois Musil, and H. Philby, Koenig presented a more comprehensive array of proofs, evidence, and detailed reasoning. Despite the compelling nature of his argument, there is still a more contentious proposal to be examined. So, you may wonder if Jean Koenig, 
armed with his comprehensive evidence doesn't claim the title of most controversial, then who does? Well, amidst the array of proposed hypotheses, one figure stands out as both controversial and widely discussed, which is the American researcher Ron Wyatt. Wyatt, too, believed that the mountain was situated in Saudi Arabia, yet he pinpointed a distinct location, the Mountain of Almonds, northwest of Saudi Arabia near the Jordanian border above the Gulf of Aqaba, leveraging his claims of uncovering various historical sites like Noah's Ark, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Red Sea Crossing, and the Ark of the Covenant, he utilized these discoveries to bolster his assertion regarding the mountain's whereabouts. Wyatt's perspective hinged on his interpretation of Exodus 3. 1. He deduced that since Moses tended to Jethro's flocks and Jethro was a priest of Midian, the mountain of God Moses encountered must also be located within the land of Midian. After purportedly discovering the Red Sea crossing site at Nueba in the Gulf of Aqaba in 1978, Wyatt concluded that the real Mount Sinai must be positioned east of the miraculous Red Sea crossing path, within the boundaries of modern-day western Saudi Arabia. In his assessment, the most probable option was Jebel al-Laws, because it presented the highest peak in the entire western Saudi Arabian mountain range. His claim was fortified by his identification of archaeological evidence, a sizable encampment near the mountain, which he believed to be the Israelites' encampment preceding their exodus. Further findings during Wyatt's investigations unveiled a substantial heap of granite rocks around a quarter mile from the mountain's base, adorned with depictions of bulls, cows, and oxen. Wyatt inferred that this site marked the great altar of Israel at the foot of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia, possibly corresponding to the one mentioned in the Golden Calf narrative. He extended his interpretations, connecting his discovery of the Red Sea crossing to what he deemed remnants of Pharaoh's chariots on the Red Sea floor, the ash-covered mountaintop symbolizing the fire of God, a massive split rock resembling the effects of powerful water flow, twelve stone pillars beneath the mountain, and additional findings. All these, he believed, were linked to the Israelites' time living in the mountain's vicinity or their exodus. Nevertheless, numerous scholars have contested Wyatt's theory, citing concerns over his methods and evidence. Firstly, Ron Wyatt lacked formal archaeology training and conducted his research as an amateur. His approach was crude and lacked systematic rigor. Notably, he failed to publish peer-reviewed reports or papers detailing his findings, instead disseminating information based solely on personal opinions. Secondly, his unconventional methods led to conflicts with both secular and religious authorities. Wyatt even faced arrest and imprisonment by the Saudi Arabian government, who accused him of being an Israeli spy due to trespassing and artifact smuggling. Moreover, some biblical scholars argue that Galatians chapter 4, verse 25, where Apostle Paul teaches the Galatian Christians about God's covenants, could be misconstrued to support Wyatt's claims. In the text, Paul mentions Mount Sinai in Arabia. However, the term Arabia encompasses a larger landmass on first-century Roman maps, including the Arabian Peninsula, the Sinai Peninsula, and northern Egypt. This perspective challenges the assertion that Mount Sinai is specifically in modern Saudi Arabia. So, if Apostle Paul consulted a first-century Roman map, the encompassed landmass of Arabia included modern-day Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, UAE, and other Asian nations, constituting a vast desert expanse. Meanwhile, there are some other shocking discoveries in Saudi Arabia, one of which is a ritual site used by a prehistoric cult. By the end of this video, you'll find out more about this ritual site. But did you know that the desert we see today in Saudi Arabia used to be full of lush plants? It might sound unexpected, but before we explore scientific proof, historical evidence supports this idea. The Quran, the Holy Book of Islam, which was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad in the 7th century CE, includes verses that describe various natural wonders created by Allah. These verses touch upon the sun, moon, stars, mountains, seas, plants, animals, and humans. The historical significance of Saudi Arabia is also evident in the Quran. This land has been mentioned in the oldest written sources that highlight its geography and climate. Ancient scholars, Travelers and geographers like Herodotus, Josephus, and Eusebius have all described the characteristics of Saudi Arabia. They portray a land of lush mountains, valleys, rivers, forests, and spices. 
The region's vibrant greenery allowed for abundant exports and established trade routes connecting it to neighboring areas. These insights come from historical accounts and records. Scientifically, we find fossil evidence that offers a glimpse into the past. Fossils are the remains or impressions of organisms, including plants and animals, that once inhabited an area. They offer insights into the evolution of life on Earth and the environmental changes over time. Fossils found in Saudi Arabia, including those of elephants, hippos, and crocodiles, paint a picture of a diverse ecosystem. Such creatures indicate a flourishing environment with ample resources. The discovery of seahorse fossils suggests the presence of shallow coastal waters with a variety of marine life. Fossils across the Arabian Peninsula, dating back to at least 350,000 years, as well as satellite imagery, suggest that Saudi Arabia experienced a wetter and more verdant climate. The findings also extend to plant fossils scattered throughout Saudi Arabia, including places like Tema, Dumat al-Jandal, and Jizan. These fossils encompass ferns, cycads, palms, grasses, legumes, and various flowering plants. Their existence spans diverse geological periods, ranging from the Permian and Triassic to the Jurassic, Cretaceous, Paleogene, Neogene, and Quaternary eras. This mosaic of plant fossils underscores the varying phases of vegetation that Saudi Arabia has witnessed throughout its history. Moreover, human fossils also contribute to the intriguing discoveries in Saudi Arabia. Preserved bones and artifacts from both humans and their ancestors who lived in the distant past offer valuable insights. These remnants offer evidence of the origins, evolution, migrations, and cultural aspects of human populations. Furthermore, they shed light on human interaction with the environment and other species. Numerous sites in Saudi Arabia, including Kalam, Al-Ma'idan, Al-Ula, and Al-Thukba have yielded human fossils. These findings comprise stone tools, pottery, inscriptions, petroglyphs, structures, and human bones, originating from various epochs of human history, the Lower Paleolithic, 400,000 years ago, Middle Paleolithic, 90,000 years ago, Upper Paleolithic, 40,000 years ago, Epipaleolithic, 20,000 years ago, and Neolithic, 10,000 years ago. What's more, scientists have also discovered coral reefs and seagrass beds in Saudi Arabia. The existence of these structures underscores the presence of clear and warm seawater, providing an environment rich in nutrients and shelter for marine life. Such discoveries, tracing back millions of years, indeed align with the overarching theme of astonishing revelations in this region. To top it all, another astonishing find comes in the form of ancient roads and tombs dating back 4,500 years. Archaeologists refer to these corridors as funerary avenues. These pathways, found in the northwest desert regions of Saudi Arabia, connected oases and pastures. Stretching over extensive distances, some spanning hundreds or even thousands of kilometers, these avenues follow the natural terrain and water sources. Accompanying these avenues are tombs referred to as pendants or ring burials. The pendants are circular cairns with extended tails perpendicular to the avenue, while the ring burials are circular cairns encircled by low walls. Varied in dimensions, but typically around 2 meters in height and 20 meters in length, these tombs house human remains and grave items. The discovery of these funerary avenues and tombs owes credit to researchers from the University of Western Australia, who utilized aerial and ground surveys, satellite imagery, and excavations. Approximately 80 tombs have undergone radiocarbon dating, revealing their age to be around 4,500 years, between 2600 and 2000 BC. These constructions might have been constructed by nomadic tribes that adjusted their movements based on rain patterns and vegetation across the landscape. Meanwhile, amidst all these shocking finds, Saudi Arabian archaeologists have unearthed a terrifying one. This time, they stumbled upon ancient human remains within a 7000-year-old desert monument, which is a site once utilized by a prehistoric cult for rituals. The remains, belonging to an adult male in his 30s, were discovered within a structure known as a mustadal, deriving its name from the Arabic word for rectangle. These ruins are part of more than 1,600 similar structures identified in Saudi Arabia since the 70s. 
Submerged beneath sand, these constructions were erected during a time when the Arabian desert flourished with grasslands, housing elephants and witnessing hippos in lakes. Evidently, the architects of these mustatils were members of an enigmatic cult. As climatic shifts gradually transformed the region into a desert, these individuals likely congregated to safeguard their land. Their protection strategy involved sacrificing cattle to unidentified deities. A recent excavation of a mustatil, documented in a study published in March, has unveiled further insights into these perplexing structures and the rituals of their long-lost devotees. This excavated mustatil, situated 34 miles or 55 kilometers east of the ancient city of Alula, stretches 460 feet or 140 meters and is constructed from local sandstone. At its center stands a prominent upright stone called the Beitel, surrounded by a collection of 260 animal skull and horn fragments. These bone fragments primarily belong to domesticated cattle, with some traces from goats, gazelles, and small ruminants. Adjacent to the Mustatil's head lies a cyst, a burial chamber style found in the Neolithic and Bronze Ages across Europe and the Middle East. Examination of the buried man's bones reveals that he was in his 30s or early 40s at the time of his demise. He displayed signs of osteoarthritis, a common degenerative joint disease. Radiocarbon dating of both human and animal bones indicates that the man's burial occurred 400 years after the animals were slaughtered. This suggests that the mustatil served as sites for repeated pilgrimages, highlighting the enduring significance of these structures in the lives of their ancient creators. Subscribe to Beyond Discovery and see you in the next episode.